Hi everyone, it's Cass. Welcome to my channel. We are filming a, something a little bit crazy tonight and the lighting's a little bit different because yes, I'm doing um, some nighttime filming. So I hope this works out for you. We're also like smash in the middle of the bedtime routine. So I can't guarantee what my microphone may or may not pick up from bedtime going on upstairs. <laughs> but I was having some fun. Um, this is this is kind of crazy, but I was having some fun taking all of my inks out. And um, I'm here today to bring you the current state of my fountain pen ink collection. I recently placed an order and you're going to see a good bit of fountain pen content coming from me in the coming weeks because I kind of got into a treat yourself kind of bug <laughs> and I have picked up some fountain pens that will be coming in and I picked up a, a lot of ink. <laughs> So I wanted to showcase my collection as it currently stands. And um, and yeah, I thought that's what we could do. If you're interested in what my fountain pen collection is currently sitting at, I did already film that video. It's actually on my other channel, my booktube channel, before I broke away and gave my planner content um, or yeah, my planner content, its own channel. So I can go ahead and link that for you down below. So if you're interested in seeing what my fountain pens are currently looking like before I bring in a bunch more, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and link that for you. Let's get this situated. I never have them out of the bottle, by the way, or I never have them out of the box, by the way. This is very, very new for me to have them all out like this. Let's try and get started. I think the easiest way to do this would be by brand. So we'll just start no particular order. Um, but this is one of the only black inks that I own. This is the Diatramentis Document Ink in black. <laughs> and I've inked it up a couple of times in one of my pilot vanishing points. Um, and it's really, you know, it's a good solid black. I wish I had gotten the archival black instead of this one, just because of the uh, the water water resistant properties of the archival ink. But I'm not mad for having this kind of black. This is the darkest black I have of the two black inks that I currently own. Um, so yeah, I just wanted a really good staple in my collection and that's what I got. The next brand, I have four inks and I, ah, no, in my upcoming haul, I, I think I took the Erban ink out of the cart, but that's okay. <laughs> so this one right here is Rui Dankra. I don't speak French. I hope that was a decent attempt. And I have this actually currently inked in my Lamy LX. So here's my swatch card of that one and showing up on the Lamy paper. It is quite soft, quite muted. I was just in a mood for it. I had a, I previously had a brighter pink in my pen and I decided I wanted to go for something a little bit softer. This is a really good writing sample of that. I've been playing around with it in my Faith Planner um, and doing like this pink and green kind of theme. And if I go to the week, but I have this in. Here we go. This is how I've had it. The next one that I was in the mood for was this Coral de Tropique. This is a very, very, very bright. When I got that set of inks, I was in a very, very bright mood. And this was the swatch card of it. Fun, fun summer ink. I also have Ombre. De Bermany. This one's more of a golden yellow. This is one of my favorite colors of ink. I have a lot of this like warm 
earth toned inks in my collection. And when I was in the mood to buy all those Urban inks, I had to add Ombre de Bermany into my cart. Um, and I really, really enjoy this. Fall is coming up. I live in Texas. I am over the 100 degree heat. And I'm thinking my next round of pens, I'm going to be inking up a lot of inks like this one. This is just like a true kind of Texas color. This is like the color of earth, but like a very beautiful, rich color of earth that you might find in the desert. I love it. And then the final Urban ink that I own is the Poussière de Lune. Um, I got this one because I'm kind of, I'm on a quest for like the perfect purple ink. And I saw a lot of people recommending this. This is one of the like most popular purple inks. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to play with this very much, but I'm very happy to have it in my collection. It's very, very rich when you get it like this. When, it, when I have played with it, I've gotten more of that lighter version of the color, not as saturated as this. So I'm wondering if I play with this one, I might need more of a broad nib. Luckily, the only broad nib I have is actually in a purple pen. So that works out nicely. <laughs> the next two inks I have in my collection are both from Robert Oster. So spoiler alert, part of my upcoming haul were more Robert Oster inks. I've liked all of the ones that I have, which is just the two. Um, I, I do have more samples of Robert Oster and I should say that like I didn't include samples in this collection video because I just wanted to cover all the bottles that I have. But um, some of the samples that I have are like Robert Oster Thunderstorm and Great Southern Ocean. Those are some colors that I really like to own full sizes of. But anyways, let's move this one out of the way. I feel like I'm playing chess with that. That's funny. Okay, so this is Australis Rose. This is one of, I think it was like a 2022 release of a color. Very pretty rose color. If you're looking for more of a rose than Rui Dankra, Robert Oster Australis Rose is going to be your pink. This is like what you would expect, like a tea rose, like the color of a tea rose. This would be it. This is so beautiful, so striking. Played with it in my pink pens. And this next one that I have is Robert Oster River of Fire. And when I bought this ink, I was like on the search for the perfect green. I just kind of like became obsessed with trying to find the perfect green. I don't know that River of Fire ended up being my perfect green. And I can't say that I have yet to find my perfect green, but this was a worthy contender and I'm glad I have it. It has slight red in there if you can see it um definitely would have to pick up with that pick up on that with a broad nib um and i've i should say that i don't know that i've given this ink a fair chance because the only times that i have played with it were like in a fine or an extra fine which i when i first bought this ink i was still very very new to fountain pens and finding the right combinations of colors um combination of pen to ink and so I might be, I don't know, now that I've added a bunch of fines and mediums into my collection, I might have to find more broad nibs to give these kinds of colors a fair chance. The next group that I have is one of the largest groups that I have in my collection. If I'm counting correctly, this is like in third place for the most of one brand that I own. So these are Diamine inks and I have, I've loved every single Diamine ink that I've purchased. I feel like I honestly can't go wrong with Diamine. If I ink up a pen with Diamine, I know it's gonna work. I know it's gonna be solid. And I do currently have Diamine inked up. And so this is another pen that has been inked up for my faith planner. So that's a really good writing sample um, of that ink. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So the ink that I'm talking about is Diamine Safari. Okay, so the ink that I'm talking about is Diamine Safari. This was part of the Diamine um, 150 year anniversary collections. So it does have more of a unique shape to the bottle, it's pretty cool. 
What a gorgeous, gorgeous green. If you don't have Diamine Safari in your collection and you love these like earthy brownish greens, ooh, ooh, go and run and get it. It is so beautiful. I've loved it in every single pen. This just, this just works. Like I said, Diamine just works. So this next ink that I have is another one of their 150 anniversary collection. This is Diamine Blue Velvet. And um, I did like a, I, I grabbed a blue ink sample pack from Goulet Pens and I did a whole spread of some blue inks. And this was the spread. So Diamine Blue Velvet is this one right here. Of this spread, you'll see a couple others um, in my collection. Um, the first like bright blue, medium blue that I owned was Kanpeki by Pilot Iroshizuku. So you'll see that one. But when comparing it amongst all these other blues, I wanted, I don't know, kind of that like patriotic blue i don't know how else to describe it i wanted this like richer blue just a touch more purple um so i i was really glad that i picked up that whole that whole sample pack and so i did end up getting the full size bottle from that pack which was blue velvet okay let's just go with these three in a row um i have discovered that i also love red inks from Diamine. I never thought I'd be a red ink kind of person, but I also just randomly got a sample of Diamine Red Dragon. The second I swatched it on that card from the sample, I was like, well, I need a full bottle of that. It's, it's not like an orangey red. It definitely has some blue tones to it. Looks great in a pen. Diamine Red Dragon, they just do red so well. Then the next one that I also have is Diamine Oxblood. I am a fan of Oxblood kind of anything. <laughs> and I love like Oxblood accessories. And when I saw that this ink was available from Diamine, just like one of their really amazing standard inks, I had to have it. And I've I've gone back and forth between this one and the next one. And I, I, I think you'd do have a spot for both of these in your collection. So that was Ox Blood, and then of course, the famous Diamine Writer's Blood. Oh, so gorgeous, such a deep, deep fall. Oh my gosh, such a beautiful fall ink. And um, yeah, I didn't know it until I started purchasing inks that I love these types of tones. So had to have it. Now, speaking of fall, I have another very, very popular dye mine, and that is Autumn Oak. This is another surprise for me because, like, yes, I love all things fall, like most of us do. But what I didn't know was that I also love orange inks. I love oranges and yellows, and dye mine Autumn Oak is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Has to be a staple, I think, in any fountain pen lover's arsenal of inks. You you really won't regret it. It looks gorgeous on every single piece of paper that I've ever used it on. And this is my most recent, while I flip through my cards, I actually have like a plan in place for my, my coloring, but for now this is what I'll be doing. So um, anyways, my most recent acquisition of inks was Diamine Earl Grey. I actually love gray inks more than I love black inks, which is funny because like in a gel pen, it's black ink all day. But if I want the feel of a black ink, I will reach for a gray ink instead. And I did not have Earl Grey. Um, between my main gray inks, this one's like more of a soft, uh, yeah, it's like, it's a warmer gray tone. Um, more like a dolphin gray you know it's a warm gray tone and i loved it this is a great gray but it's not my favorite gray okay my next brand is roar and Klingner. and i should actually go with the very first roar and Klingner that i ever purchased and this one has quite a story behind it 
So this was um, Rohrer and Klingner. I, I could not say the German name of this ink if I tried, but this is Deep Pine Forest. This was limited edition in 2022. And this was a part of my quest for the perfect green ink. This is very, very close. This is very close. And in a broad nib, this is gorgeous. I don't love it in finer nibs. So I'll just say that. If you're looking for this like really, really deep green, put it in a broad nib. But this is one of the, hmm, I don't know that I have a lot of limited edition inks, but this is definitely one of them that I had. And I follow Rohrer and Klingner on Instagram and they blasted this ink out on all of their socials. And I saw it and I was like, that, that is the green, that is the green, but it was sold out everywhere. Um, so I actually ordered this from Wonder Pens in Canada. I ordered it all the way from Canada because it was the only place that I could find that still had it in stock. Um, so this is Roar and Klingner's Deep Pine Forest. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Put that in a broad. Um, okay, what do we have? Oh, perfect. This one is another more olivey green, but not as brown as Safari. This is a very popular Roar and Klingner's Alt Gold Green. This is a wonderful light-ish green. It's like, it, you can definitely build it up, um, which you can see from that swatch. It's, it doesn't have as much brown. This would have more yellow than the brown, but a wonderful like mid-tone green if you're looking for something in that olive-ish family. It's not quite as olive as the Safari, but this is a very popular, well-known, beloved ink. If you're into this kind of green, this is, this should be on on your list. Now, the final, um, and this was actually my most recent Roar and Klingner purchase because this ended up being out of stock, which is so crazy because I didn't know how many people would want a yellow ink. And again, I didn't know that I was a fan of yellow and orange inks either, but this is Roar and Klingner's Helianthus. Um, this one got onto my radar because I follow Goulet Pens on all of their socials and I watch a lot of their videos and Drew Brown of Goulet Pens did a video of like his top picks for the best inks uh, in every color and his pick for yellow was Helianthus for the fact that it's like beautiful. This is like a, a sunflower yellow like a sunshine yellow. It's beautiful and bright, but still readable, which can be very hard to do, um, I feel like, in a yellow ink, to find it pleasing to the eye, pleasing to read. I have this actually, I think I do still have it currently inked in my Twisby Eco Saffron. Um, that's a pen match made in heaven. Yeah, it's this one. Oh, so dreamy, so dreamy. Moving right along, we have some very special inks here. Now I'm gonna go with the one that I purchased while I was trying to stave off um, purchasing Diamine Safari. <laughs> They're not the same at all. This is Sailor 370. And this is a definite um, contender for that like grayish, greenish brown. Um, I do like this color, but I don't use it as much because typically, I have found my eye would be drawn to something like Diamine Safari. So, and admittedly, this is something that I do have to ink up more, but I've also, you know, amongst the four Sailor inks that I own, um, I've never been disappointed in Sailor inks. So um, there's like a couple of these like individual ones that I've had my eye on and just never really pulled the trigger on. Um, but yes, Sailor 370. Oh, now this one. Is this my favorite ink? The answer is yes. This is the Sailor um, 50 States collection and the color is Texas. There are a lot of Texas themed inks in my collection. This is my favorite of them all. It is the perfect, perfect earth brown, a little bit of orange. This is a Texas brown. Um, look up Texas Longhorns, just look up, look up 
West Texas deserts. This is a Texas brown. It's so gorgeous. I had a hard time when I first got this ink taking it out of a pen. Um, I just kept re-inking, re-inking. I used it so much I had to give other inks a chance. And I didn't, I didn't want to stop. I didn't want to stop. This is my favorite ink. Um, I ordered this from Drum Ghouls. And that's a, that's a pen shop in Houston, Texas. So that's where, surprise, I've gotten all of my Texas themed inks from. Um, but they're also very, very well known in the pen community. Very well respected. Oh, Sailor, Texas. Wow, what a perfect, perfect ink for me. Then I have these two Sailor Monio inks that are just for funsies. Just really, really fun. These were actually among my first... Sorry, I'm, try I'm trying to like shuffle through my cards. Um, these were amongst some of my first inks that I purchased full bottles of. As you can see, I'm a fan of purchasing full bottles. So if I was going to get a Sailor Monio ink, the very first one had to be Sailor Monio Haha. -ha. Iconic, beautiful, bluish, bluish purple. This is like what fairy tales are made of. This is what Cinderella's dress is made out of, is Sailor Monio Haha. -ha. And the ink performs just as magically. Um, there has to be a very, uh, there's so many Sailor Monio inks that I really want. There's so many Sailor inks that I want. Um, but this one is, has more of a premium price tag and Oh, every single time I put a Sailor Monio ink into my cart, then I take it out and <laughs> I just like go back and forth. But I do have Sailor Monio Haha. -ha. Um, I actually, I was surprised that I bought this when I bought this because um, it wasn't really in my plan. But one of the first Cavecos that I ever bought was the Caveco Sport in Iridescent Pearl. And this is a match made in heaven with that, with that pen. So that's what ended up getting Sailor Monio Haha -ha into my collection. Now, while I search for the card for this one, this is uh, Sailor Monio Neko Yanagi. This is another like fairy tale, dreamy purple. Here you go. Just so gorgeous. This is like a fairy tale ink. And I, I, you know, I like putting this in purple pens. Why not? It's it's gorgeous. Beautiful for spring or if you're a summer gal, summer gent. Okay, so this is like tied for first with the most amount of inks I have for one particular brand. Um, and there, I've gotten a lot of these from Drum Ghouls. So let me, let me pull, are they all in the back? Oh, that's convenient. Okay, so let me do those three first then. I still feel like I'm playing chess when I line them up. Okay. Okay, so these are my other three Texas themed inks. The first one is Noodler's Texas Blue Bonnet. She is fun, she is pretty. In my ink journal for all of those blues, She's this top one right here. I will say, Texas Blue Bonnet does not love Leuchtturm paper. This will feather like mad on cheap paper. So if you're gonna visit Drom Ghouls, this is where I purchased it from. I think it's a Drom Ghouls exclusive. The Texas Blue Bonnet is the state flower of Texas. Um, if you're gonna purchase this from Drom Ghouls, just know Texas Blue Bonnet, she needs um, good fountain pen paper. She won't do, she won't perform as well on cheap paper. And this next one I have is the USS Texas. This is a decommissioned naval ship. Um, it's hard to categorize this particular one. It's, it, it leans more green to me. So I have it like categorized with my green inks. And that's only because I put it up against like a, a Shinkai from Pilot Hiroshizuku from a 54th Math Massachusetts from Noodlers. It, this is, yeah, this reads to me as like a sea green, like a deep sea green. 
beautiful. Here we have my most recent Texas acquisition. This, I think, was debuted last year at the Dallas Pen Show. I think it was, it had, it would make the most sense if it was at the Dallas Pen Show. I don't see why it wouldn't be. This is a Noodlers and Drum Ghouls exclusive. This is Noodlers Stockyard Signature. Oh boy, this is like, like cowboy leather brown. I love brown inks. Of all the ink colors, brown inks are my favorite and drum ghouls when they came out with the stockyard signature i was like well that's going in the cart like i just immediately saw them debut it and immediately went to the website to go buy it now this ink is really really interesting because you don't really quite know what shade you're gonna get this is noodler's american aristocracy and um it's a brown ink but it could be one of three shades of brown depending on the batch that you get they purposefully like mix it differently so this one ended up being a much deeper brown version. Um, and it looks like it's like a like a purple undertone. That's what I would call it. Very, very deep. I ink this up quite a bit, actually. I like this on my work notebook. Um, it behaves well. Can't really complain about that one. But it's not as like rich and earthy and warm of a brown as my other browns that I've shown you. Speaking of very rich and very warm, this is Noodler's Southwest Sunset. This is another popular ink. Um, if you don't have Southwest Sunset in your collection, it's just like one of those ones that everybody kind of gravitates to. This one's going to be the most bright of my oranges that I have. Noodler's Southwest Sunset. Just such a beautiful staple. Speaking of staples, when I got this ink, I did not think it was going to become a staple for me. And yet here we are. This is Noodler's 54th Massachusetts wonderful navy blue. Um, I actually do have this currently inked up as well. Um, which notebook is it in? It's in surprise, another ink notebook. I have, I have a lot of ink notebooks. This is my transcription project. Okay, so this is 54th Massachusetts right here. This is Dye Mine Safari. These are the last two Noodler's inks that I own, and they're both um, in the pink red family. This is Noodler's Rose in the Louvre. This is a renamed ink. It used to be called Ottoman Rose. Um, I actually did get a sampler. I actually got a sampler of pink inks um, from Goulet Pens as well, and this is Noodler's Rose in the Louvre compared to other pinks is definitely not among the bright this is more of like a maroon pink but still light um, in color more muted that i really enjoyed um, so because of that i ended up purchasing a full bottle and this was actually my very first noodler's purchase this is noodler's black swan in australian roses I was totally and completely influenced from other ink YouTubers that had pink pens and were all saying this is this is it. This is the pink to get. Um, it has quite a long dry time in my experience and for a lefty that's a hard pill to swallow um, because I will smear it to death if I don't work on it very carefully. <laughs> but worth it because it's gorgeous. <laughs> All right, now before uh, we're closing in on my final category, and um, this should be easy because this is the only Private Reserve ink that I own. This is Private Reserve Blue Suede. This is another ink that I was completely and totally influenced to buy um, from Journal Sunshine. Um, she inked up a Twisby 580 Iris with Private Reserve Blue Suede, and I was like, I need that exact ink because I have that exact pen. That's really how it went. And um, gosh, so pretty. This one's more of like a deep teal, but not, this is more of a blue teal than a green teal. Second to last company, this is Colorverse. I only have two Colorverse inks so far, um, and that's for a very specific reason. The only good writing sample I've gotten from Colorverse has been on my swatch card. When I've written with Colorverse, 
mm, it could be because I wrote on it with cheap paper. Maybe I should try saving it for good paper. Um, but it feathered really easily. And when I take my pens to work, I can't have it feathering through Leuchtturm paper. But anyways, this is Colorverse Brunch Date. Um, very, very similar to my Urban Rui Dancre. And um, it, it's, it's definitely like more of an earth toned pink. Wow, look at all the ink on my fingers. Um, it's definitely more of an earth toned brownish pink, which is what I loved about it. It's very, very muted. Um, and it paired nicely with my other color verse. And this is a very, very popular brown. This is Coffee Break, Color Verse Coffee Break. This was part of the Color Verse Ordinary Moments collection. Um, I haven't been able to give this ink a proper go, but I love brown inks. I don't want to give up on it. And I know this is popular. So if you're someone who also has Color Verse Coffee Break, let me know, you know, how have you gotten it to work? Like in what pens in what paper is it working for you because I love brown okay we have now reached the final um final ink company that I own tied for first place as far as number of inks but it reigns supreme in my heart as my favorite brand of fountain pen inks and of course with this very distinctive bottle shape you know, this is Pilot Iroshizuku. Oh, it started with only one and now we're here. <laughs> started from the bottom and now we're here. Okay, this is Pilot Iroshizuku Kosumosu. When I was searching for pink inks, this one also came up as one that was just incredibly flattering. A bright candy pink, but not too blue um, that I thought was soft enough that I could read it and, and it wouldn't be so much of a stark contrast against a white piece of paper that I would be blinded by it, right? Um, very, very cute bubble gum. There we go, that's a bubble gum pink. Um, and so I've, I've had this inked up over the summertime. Very, very fun. This is Yamabuto. Very, very popular color of ink overall. Um, this is more of a magenta color. I'm gonna pull Hmm, what am I seeing in there? That does look a little bit more red than blue of a magenta. Um, I haven't had the best luck with this ink. I just need the right pen for it. And I think that's just me also needing to be in the mood for this. Because sometimes I want like a, a magenta. But then when I see it, I'm like, that's too dark. You know, it just depends. It's a, all of the Pilot of Roshizukus are very, very, very wet flowing inks. So I need to have this in maybe more finer nibs. Um, so that way I'm not getting as much of a saturation on my page. This is Pilot of Roshizuku Shin Kai. This was not one of my first ones, but it was a contender for the first one because this is a blue gray ink and I love blue gray. That's just like one of my favorite color combos. Um, this is more gray leaning of a navy than some of my other navy inks, um, which is it probably like if I'm competing for navies to ink up, 54th Massachusetts is more of that true navy than Shinkai is. Um, and perhaps this one is one of them that needs more of a broad nib to be able to get more of those navy tones, but it is still more gray leaning that you can see from there. We might as well keep going with blue inks from Pilot. This is Konpeki, another extremely popular. This was my first. Nope, this wasn't. Just kidding. Um, this is another extremely popular ink, um, just overall, and so well loved. If you're looking for a bright blue, Pilot Hiroshizuku Konpeki, bright blue. It hasn't ever disappointed me. It looks lovely from every pen that I've used with it, every size of nib that you could possibly imagine. Pilot Hiroshizuku Pilot Konpeki has to be in your collection. And this is the last amongst the blue family because this is more of a teal. Now this is more of a green teal. This is uh, Pilot, Hiroshizuku, uh, Pilot Hiroshizuku Kujaku. Um, I purchased this pretty closely to when I purchased Blue Suede. Um, and they're just two totally different teal inks, teal and turquoise. This is more green leaning, and then Blue Suede would be the more blue leaning one. 
beautiful though. This was the most recent um, Iroshizuku ink in my collection. Still on the hunt for perfect green inks, and this is one of the contenders. This is Pilot Iroshizuku Chiku Rin. This was like the bamboo leaf green. Um, very, very light in comparison to Safari Alt Gold Grun. If I was going to put these up against those two inks, Alt Gold Grun, I think, is the top of those picks because it's just a little bit darker. This one reads very, very light. Um, Alt Gold Grun is right here. So that's where you can see the two of them. Yeah, very, very fun to have these two in my collection. So there's both of a, a time and a place for each of them. This would definitely be more like spring, summer. When I started collecting Iroshizuku inks, I had to have Takesumi, um, which is charcoal black. Um, this is, I just had to have the Pilot Iroshizuku black ink. And so this was my second black ink, but I tend to ink up, if I want a black ink, I tend to ink up with Takesumi more than Document Black, but it's not water resistant. So I still need like a water resistant black. And then finally, one of my favorite colors. I have this inked up quite consistently in so many different pens. This was my, hmm, what year was it? Was it during the pandemic? I think it was during the pandemic. It was my birthday ink. <laughs> this was the ink that kickstarted the rest of this. Um, and so that was purposefully why I saved it for last. This is Pilot Roshizuku Fuyu Syogun. This is a gray ink. It has so much variation in it. And even though it looks like it writes really lightly, no, you can get it to look like that and, and kind of like everywhere in between. I was more surprised by this ink than I think any other ink, which is really what started my resurgence into fountain pens. I started the fountain pen journey quite a long time ago and I left fountain pens for, for a long time because I just had a bad experience and I didn't understand a lot about pen and ink combinations. And then Pilot of Roshizuku Fuyu Syogun came into my life. I paired it up with a Twisby Eco and I never looked back. <laughs> I, I do this all the time. Um, and you know, just when, like how some people might have like black inked up pens as their daily writer. This is probably like the most daily writer ink out of my whole collection that I have. I just need you to see the disaster of all the boxes. And then there's some of my samples. I don't think those are all of my samples. It's gonna be fun putting them all back together again. All right. Look at my hands, look at this thumb. That was the one that was like going through all the samples. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was really fun for you to kind of see what the state of my current fountain pen collection or fountain pen ink collection is looking like before I get the new ones that are coming in. I did kind of go a little bit bananas um, and there are more inks coming in that um, will be added to this group. Um, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you have favorite brands? Are there inks in this collection that really surprised you and really kind of turned you on to it? You'd never heard of it before. I'm telling you, oh, this one, this one, um, these two, actually these two, my favorites. Sailor Texas, Pilot of Rushizuku, Fuyu Siogun. Those are it. Those are it for me. Um, but anyways, <laughs> if you liked this, please go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, do all of those really amazing YouTube engagement things. That'll really help me out since this is like the newer of my channels. That'll really help me out with, you know, all the fun YouTube things that YouTube likes to do to you. Um, and if there are any particular like showcases that you want to see, if you want to see, like for instance, the brown inks, the pink inks, whatever, um, please go ahead, let me know in the comment section below if there's something that you'd like to see in particular. Other than that, you know how these videos end. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.